Short answer, a huge amount. It's actually incredible how many drugs the president was taking. And until recently, much was kept secret. The issue was and remains Kennedy's public image. An image of a young, vibrant, athletic and healthy young man that was cultivated for the American voters from the beginning and must now be maintained for posterity. In 1941, Joe Kennedy, JFK's father, arranged for his own daughter, Rosemary, to receive a lobotomy without his wife's knowledge. Rosemary was JFK's younger sister and had severe learning difficulties. This attempt to control her behaviour was as much about preventing it from tarnishing the young John Kennedy's image and political career than it was about treatment. Rosemary was left incapacitated and barely able to speak following the procedure, and was subsequently placed in a nunnery in Wisconsin for the remainder of her life. She died in 2005. John Kennedy himself spent long periods of his childhood in hospital with a variety of abdominal complaints, which today seem likely to be diagnosed as IBS, or something like Crohn's disease. He had severe abdominal pain, blood in his stool, chronic diarrhoea and bouts of severe constipation. These complaints would accompany Kennedy for the rest of his adult life. He was prescribed steroids to treat the condition, which by his early twenties he was administering himself as a subcutaneous preparation. He would take a knife, make a small incision in his thigh, place the tablet inside the wound and cover it with a bandage. The steroids, however, would prove a major problem. Within a few years, he was suffering from adrenal insufficiency, or Addison's disease, very likely caused by the prolonged steroid use. To the abdominal pain and diarrhoea was now added fatigue, weight loss, dehydration, low blood pressure and dizziness, nausea and vomiting. The second issue with the steroids was the thinning of the bones, or osteoporosis, another common side effect. For Kennedy, this was a particular issue in his lower back. For most of his adult life, he suffered from severe and often debilitating daily pains due to several vertebral crush fractures caused by the weak bones. He had several operations to treat this, none of which worked. Thus, by the time Kennedy was campaigning for president in 1960, and in the years before he was assassinated, He was taking a serious number of medications every day just to ensure he could even function. All, of course, kept secret. For his abdominal pains, diarrhoea and weight loss, he took Lomotil, Metamucil Fiber, Paragoric Opium Solution, the Antisesia Barbiturate Phenobarbital, Testosterone to build up his muscles, and the Antispasmodics Trazentine and Bento. He continued the oral and injected steroids for his adrenal insufficiency and added daily salt tablets. He took the sedative barbiturate tuinol to help him sleep. For his back pain, he took codeine, demerol and methadone. To relax in the evenings, he took ritalin and for anxiety, the tranquilizer meprobinate and the sedative librium. Several times a day he was administered procaine injections into about seven or eight sites in his lower back for the pain, and routinely injected with gamma globulins, presumably to combat infections. Infections he suffered a great deal from, often getting abscesses at the site of all these injections, for which he regularly took cycles of antibiotics. He also suffered from a chronic burning, stinging pain when he urinated, This likely from an untreated STD he had contracted when he was younger. Perhaps from the quote Scandinavian blonde he dated whilst in the Navy during World War II, he was later ordered to break up with this woman on the grounds that she was in all likelihood a German spy. These were the official medications from his team of White House doctors. For years, Kennedy also received injections of steroids and amphetamines for his back from Dr. Jacobson, the infamous celebrity doctor also known as Dr. Feelgood, who would later lose his medical licence because of his penchant for injecting his patients with speed. This incredible narcotic regime panicked many of those closest to the president. 
At one stage, Kennedy's brother, Bobby Kennedy, had the FBI analyse the contents of Dr. Feelgood's syringes to ensure the president was not being poisoned, and has been a source of intrigue to recent historians speculating on the cumulative effects of these drugs, and, of course, the chronic pain, on Kennedy's mind and mood during principal events of his presidency, not least the near-nuclear catastrophe of the Cuban Missile Crisis. There is also a tragic epilogue. As many historians have noted of Kennedy's assassination in 1963, the first bullet that hit the president's neck should have caused him to slump to the floor of his car. It was, in all likelihood, the rigid back brace that Kennedy was wearing to help alleviate his pain that kept him upright, and hence his head exposed, awaiting Oswald's second bullet that duly struck the back of his head and killed him. Thanks for listening. If you like this, subscribe and hit the notification bell.